then maybe uh, you you want to go to the quick start first thing would be to install the kafka in your system uh, you may you can download it from here uh, like you can download this particular uh, uh, tar file like for scala 2.12 or 2.13 anything is fine once you install once you download it you can install it in some uh, you can store it in some location like uh, i have stored it over here and you can see that after uh, unzipping it, there are multiple folders inside it. So there is a folder called as bin. Inside bin, if you're working on a Windows machine, you can go into the windows and there are batch scripts that is uh, available, which you can use. Similarly, uh, there is something called as a zookeeper in Kafka and something called as a Kraft. So zookeeper was earlier way to uh, run the Kafka cluster. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk about Zookeeper separately in se some session. Uh, after Kafka 3, I guess, uh, Kraft actually introduced where we don't require Zookeeper. But again, uh, we can talk uh, technical architecture in depth in uh, other session. So once we have installed, once we have downloaded it and unzipped it, you will see these folders. You have to go into the config. Uh, you have to go into Kraft and there are three different uh, properties available. When you open these properties, then uh, you will see something like this. There is a server dot properties, there is a controller properties, and there is a broker properties. There are two. If you don't want to do any changes in these properties, it's still fine. But if you want to change some location of the logs, so you can search for a property called log dot dir, and you can provide some location where you want to store the logs. Like I have provided it in the same folder like over here if you see i have provided the folder as logs and uh, inside this like in the same installation i have created one folder called as logs and i have i am storing all the information over here otherwise by by default it is temp.log or temp directory it stores the log information this is something you can change you can uh, change something like a uh, quorum voters uh, port number or something but maybe default is also fine uh, for us. So you can keep it default. Once you have done that, you just open the uh, CMD, like in the command prompt, you can go to that folder. Like for me, it's tool Kafka bin windows. And inside that there are a few commands. I'll uh, share these commands as well. First, first you have to generate something called as a cluster ID. So there is a command to this. You will, it will generate some ID like this. And then you have to format the directory. So there's another command where you can pass the, this particular information and it will actually create all the necessary things that you want to uh, do to start a Kafka, to set up a Kafka cluster. Once that is done, you can just uh, run this particular command where you want to start the Kafka cluster. So basically there's a Kafka server start.bat file. Uh, you can just go over here and I have already done that. So I'll just uh, run it like this. When, once we run it, it will uh, <clears throat> it will start the Kafka cluster and then uh, you can, uh, so if you see, you will see something like this. There may be scenario that uh, your uh, logs get corrupted. So you just have to go there and uh, delete the log folder and it will start working fine. But this is for practice, not on production. So once you have started the Kafka cluster, there are two things. So we talked about the topic we have talked about the uh, producers and consumers. So the first thing that you do is you have to create the topic. So you can uh, list the topic if there are any topics available or not. So something like this. So I can see that I have created a topic yesterday called user activity. Uh, what information you have to pass over here? You have to pass the server information like where uh, the server is running. So generally by default, it is localhost colon 9092. Uh, I have changed it to 9098 because some other service in my machine is using 9092. You can pass on that information and it will give you the topic detail. Now, if you want to create a Kafka topic, so let's say I want to create a Kafka topic. I'll just copy this. Uh, so these are the commands I have already uh, uh, jotted it down. I'll share it with you people. You can just copy this and uh, Maybe if you want to create some topic like, like, uh, let's say I want to create a topic called this test. So there is a command called Kafka topic dot bat, and then uh, you can provide the topic name, maybe test. And 
I have talked about partition. You can define how many partition you want by default one partition. I can increase it to two, three, four, five. Replication, uh, we'll talk about in some other uh, session, but in the local machine, you can't have more than one. So we'll pass one replication. And again, the Kafka server uh, port and host. So local host colon 9092. Once I do this, it will create a topic for me. So it now says that I have created a topic called as a test. Now I list and I will say two topic in my, uh, in my, this uh, Kafka topics. So now we have test and we have user activity. Now let's say there's some application, assume that there's some application and it is going to generate the data into these Kafka topics. So for that, we can just copy this command using Kafka producer dot bat and we can uh, define the topic name. So let me do that. I will copy it over here and on the Kafka test topic, I want to pass some information. So maybe uh, there may be a message like, uh, what can be a message? A uh, transaction of INR hundred done like this. So this is a message. Once someone is going to send this message, it is going to store in a Kafka topic. And the one who is sending the message is called as a producer. Currently we are using a console like command line. That's why we are using the console producer. But when we will talking, when we'll be talking about applications like Java application or Python application, they are going to send these messages. So once the message is produced, other next step is to consume that message. So to consume that message, you are going to use the Kafka console consumer and uh, you have to pass the topic name. Like I'll pass it over here. The topic name is test and you can see that it is able to uh, read the message. So it will take some time. Uh, yes, it started and you can see that the message that we have produced, we are able to consume that message. Now, let me say if I want to send hi, uh, you will see that hi is also available over here. So there are three things, Kafka topic, Kafka server, uh, then producers and consumers. So four things are there that we have seen. Kafka topic is used to, you can think of it as a table, which is source information. Similarly, Kafka producer is someone who is going to produce the information and Kafka consumer is someone who is going to consume it. And similarly, uh, like all other things are same. Like it also in, requires the same information like bootstrap server or broker information topic information from where we have to consume. Similarly, producer wants the uh, broker information and it wants a topic where it wants it have to produce. Maybe uh, when you are working on production, there will be security coming in. So it will be asking for more information related to how to use this uh, Kafka producer or consumer based on the uh, how your security protocols are defined. Maybe we'll talk about that again in uh, some future sessions. So this is how you can uh, install Kafka, you can run Kafka and a sample producer, you can use a console producer and then you can produce those messages and consume those messages. Uh, any questions on this installation part? I know our session was a bit fast, but there's a lot to con uh, cover in one hour. But I think there must be, uh, you must be getting some idea now, having some idea now how to use Kafka. Any questions here? Uh, anyone? Uh, yeah, Mo, 